welcome to Mommy Space, the podcast for moms of all stages. My name is Kay Jenin, and this podcast was created to give moms a voice to share their experiences and to share that there is not just one way to be a mom. This is a place where you can learn to love the woman inside the mother. If you're not aware, this is the first episode ever where I, Kay Jenin, am the Mommy Space host. Uh, if you're not familiar with Mommy Space, uh, it has a long history of different hosts, aka there's been three of us. Um, and I've been so honored to have been asked to be the next. And so I thought, why not just start with talking about my experience of being a wife and transitioning into being a mother and a wife. Um, This is a really interesting topic to me because I feel like it's something that's not talked about very often in, I don't know, in the world. Like we don't, I guess the only interpretation I had ever had about what it means to be a wife and a mother is on TV and media. And that's either one way where it's like you're going to cook and clean and take care of babies and the husband's going to make the money and come home. And that's a very traditional um, way of looking at being a wife and mother. And then in more recent times, I feel media portrays that by getting married and having babies, you're sacrificing your freedom, you're sacrificing your success, um, and that in reality, you're just kind of agreeing to this terrible lifestyle that's going to destroy your life. Um, I know maybe in the last couple of months, my husband and I sat down and we watched some kind of comedy that really depicted all these marriages falling apart when they decided to have babies and um, how it was just this hard time and it sucked and everybody wanted to get a divorce and nobody wanted kids. And um, it was really disheartening knowing that um, the lifestyle that I'm choosing is not being represented at all in media and it's actually discouraging young people from doing those things. And so I wanted to jump in and give my two cents um, and just kind of talk about some of the things that I guess as a new mom, Um, and I guess my husband and I have only been married for two years. We're right over that newlywed, um, season, but I just wanted to share what it's been like going from being just a wife where you can do whatever you want. Um, really my husband and I, we could work as much as we want. We could work as little as we want. Um, we could just do everything as a team and it was 50, 50 to now, Um, I think the biggest change for me has been when you add a baby to the mix, it's no longer, okay, who's available to work, who's available to do this and get it done. It's kind of like, okay, well, I have to do this and we still have to pay our bills. So how are we going to make this work? Um, And we both have dreams and I don't know, these big goals for our lives. And adding a baby really does make those things change a little bit. My husband has had to pick up a lot of slack in, um, in just, I guess, the workload in our family and um, in providing so that I'm able to be with our son. And that's a big goal of ours. Um, I have no judgment on anybody who chooses a different way of parenting or a different way of handling um, their children. But for me, and my husband definitely um, is in agreement with me on this, but I think I'm probably the one spearheading that I feel really strongly that I want to be physically available to our child and children um, as they grow. I um, was raised by a single mom who worked full time and I didn't get to see her a lot when I was young. And um, I have my own share of childhood issues, right? We all do. But I would say my mom did really well balancing that. But I always craved being around her and still to this day, it's really hard for me to share her attention. And so I would I would love my children to feel um, that whenever they need to go through some emotional issues that I'm there, whenever they need, um, when they're just having a bad day, they have a parent there to walk them through that, um, among lots of other things. I just want to be available and present. And I feel the way that I can best do that is being at home with them. Um throughout even schooling as well. We're intending on homeschooling right now. And that's just my heart is to be present and to be available for them. And so choosing that lifestyle is hard because you're choosing to have one income or I have to get really creative with income. 
And um, we really, we really love what we feel the Lord has put on our heart to do with our life. But obviously that comes with a trade-off. And um, yeah, so sometimes it's hard that my husband has to be the one to pick up that slack. Um, I don't know that he always, I don't know if he's ever actually verbalized that to me, but it's hard as his wife and I want him to be happy. I want him to be fulfilled in his life to um, maybe I just put expectations on him or I put his opinions on him like, oh, he must hate this, (laughs) even though that might not be true at all of how he feels. That's just, um, I guess, my interpretation of his feelings is, oh, I bet he doesn't like this. I bet he feels held back or whatever. So that's definitely been, I think, the hardest part so far is keeping my eye on the prize of what we're giving up and why we're giving it up. And then um, beyond just that, that's more internal. But in our relationship, I mean, I really have to stop and think about it for a second. I think for for parenting purposes, we're very much on the same page, which I'm very fortunate um, to be married to someone where we think very similarly when it comes to parenting. Um, and we talked about these things when we were dating. I think that's the best thing is to really get into the thick of it before you're married um, so that you really know what to expect. I knew how my husband felt about a variety of topics with parenting before we were even engaged. And I think that really set us up for success walking into parenthood. I would say the stress on our marriage right now, I mean, I think in all seasons, there's probably something in your marriage that like isn't ideal. I hope I can say that, that there's probably something you always want to work on. And I would say right now, the things I want to work on are things that we've always had troubles with, um, with conflict and we both react very differently when maybe some pressure is applied and I tend to get more needy and anxious and he tends to shut down and obviously those don't work well together and that's something that we've always wanted to work on um, and it's always something that's um, in progress I think is the best way to say it but when you add a baby to the mix lack of sleep to the mix um, those things are just heightened so I would say that's probably the biggest thing that I've seen come about since being married is um, the issues that were already there are just heightened. And that that doesn't mean our marriage is ending. That doesn't mean um, that we don't like each other or anything. But it does mean it's just uh, a little highlighter, just highlighted a little bit. And so that's something that we're really pressing into, learning more about ourselves and each other and challenging ourselves to not react the way that's most comfortable, but to react the way that's most I'm going to say holy for the lack of a word that comes to mind. Um, But yeah, it really is that challenge to be holy in our marriage and with one another. Um, And so for me, that looks like being patient. That means walking away sometimes. Um, I'm not one to walk away in the fight. I really like pushing and pushing and pushing and getting to the end of it. And that's just not always reality. And that's actually coming from a place of insecurity and control, not a place of peace. And so I have to recognize in myself right now, you're just feeling anxious because you're scared or you're feeling anxious because you want to be in charge and you're not, and you're realizing you're not. And so instead of pushing forward and making your husband upset or, um, or to react in a way that means he's not able to best represent himself, just walk away. Like go hang out in our room and watch some YouTube until we're chill and we can talk about it. Um, And so for me, that's been something I'm learning and growing in. I think, um, yeah, and I don't want to gloss over it either. I think it's really important. I really appreciate seeing um, different voices on social media who are genuine and honest and say like, I don't know. There is a girl I follow who recently posted about how she broke her kid's toy because she was angry. And I just really appreciated her saying that because even though I'm a pastor, even though I am, um, I'm just trying to think all the things like I'm a Christian and I work at a church and I buy all these Jesus books for my kid and I love worship music. Like I've broken things before out of anger. Can I just say that? Am I allowed to say that? I've yelled at my husband. I've done things um, that I'm not like happy about. I'm not proud of it, but I want to be honest about it. And um, 
I don't want to act like I have all my stuff together and I don't want anybody to feel this is why this is why I want to say that not because it's going to make me look bad and people might judge me and it might exclude me from things that I'd like to do. But I want to say it because that's reality for a lot of people is most of us don't have our crap together. Most of us do things we're embarrassed about. And I think it's important to be honest about that, not just sit in it right? It's not, it's not okay to continue behaving that way. It's not okay to not be able to control my emotions or um, not know how to have a healthy conflict with my husband. That's not something that I'm settled in, but it is, it is what I've experienced and it doesn't mean that I am any different than who I believe I am. Um, So just take that as an encouragement if you feel like a psycho sometimes. Um, So am I, and that's okay. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so that's really vulnerable. That's something that's more uncomfortable for me to share. If you don't know me, um, I'm very comfortable with being an open book. That's my go-to. I've had to learn to actually... um, protect some of those things not in a like defense way let me let me say that the right way um you know in in the bible mary when she learned that she was going to give birth to the messiah she pondered it in her heart and i always have to remind myself she pondered it in her heart it's not bad to ponder things um it's not bad to have some privacy sometimes and i choose to do that out of wisdom not because i'm hurt i hope that comes across my husband is very very private And I'm very not. And so obviously you can see sometimes that is weird. Um, I don't think we often get into like a pickle about me exposing things that he doesn't want me to. He really like accepts who I am and that I'm that way. But um, I just like being known by people and having all my cards on the table. So I've had to kind of learn how to do that in a more, I would say, mature way. But that's definitely me struggling with anxiety and lashing out on people specifically my husband. I don't lash out on anybody. Honestly, when I was a kid, conflict with my parents caused me to be really quiet and I would shut down and just stare at them basically because I didn't, I was like, you're my parents. So it doesn't really matter what I say because you don't have to listen to me. And as an adult walking into like a relationship, I don't know where I found this voice, but I'm just like, I don't have to take this. I'm an adult. And so I get very, um, I don't know. It's gotten like, it's gotten a little more bold than it was when I was a child. And now I have to learn how to rein that in. And so um, I, that's uncomfortable sharing because that's not the Christian thing, right? Or it's not um, the pastor's wife thing to do, right? Um, to always be calm and patient. That's not even biblical, right? I don't want to minimize it. I don't want to like say, oh, it's fine. Like biblically, love is patient and kind and that's not kind. But Um, I think it's really important to be transparent and open about the things that we struggle with and the reality of who we are, because I really believe those things culminate in the dark. And if it doesn't have a dark place to grow, then it's dead. And so that's the purpose of me being transparent and honest about that, as well as to encourage you that you're not a freak. Other people don't have it figured out because sometimes we start to believe those lies of everyone else has this figured out but me. Um, So I'm just Yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole shebang. We could go really into it. Um, But I'm supposed to be talking about my relationship with my husband and how it's changed. Um, I think it's also important to talk about intimacy. Everybody has a different um, experience with how intimacy has changed um, for them when they have a baby with their partner or their spouse. Um, I think, right, the narrative that you hear most often is that Um, people start struggling in that department and, um, women don't really want to, and men get frustrated. Um, women are too tired, men are frustrated, etc. I think that can be all sorts of things, but I know for us, um, I don't, maybe my husband would disagree, but I don't feel like much had changed. Um, basically like after that first year, right, you get kind of into a rhythm that's comfortable. And I feel like we kind of maintain that rhythm. Um, I had a C-section, So that kind of changes maybe your limitations, depending on how well you're healing. Um, I healed really well, and I didn't have to heal from um, anything like an episiotomy or things like that. So, um, yeah, I I would say that um, that didn't really 
affect our intimate life at all. And I love that I'm talking about that for the world to hear. That's really comfortable. Um, <laughs> but I, I just think it's important to touch on that because that's a really, um, it's a really big part of marriage, right? Um, my husband and I have been talking about when are we having our second kid? Our son is six months old and we're impatient people. And sometimes we just like to be okay with being impatient, I guess. Um, so we've, that's been in discussion, but I think we're going to give ourselves like three to six more months. And yeah, just so you know, in case you care, (laughs) but I would say overall how our marriage has been affected is it's for me, it's really, it takes a lot of intentionality to keep myself from being mama bear against my husband. Um, sometimes it's really easy to hold your baby and feel like you're guarding him from everybody. It's not even just my husband. Um, and maybe I hope somebody is like, yeah, I totally relate to that. It takes a lot of, um, self-awareness, I guess, for me to just recognize when I am truly defending my son or, you know, advocating for him in a discussion with my husband being like, no, I think we should do this or like, no, he needs this right now. Or it's never like my husband just being like, nope, he doesn't need food. That's not what I'm talking about. It's more intricate things than that. I wish I had a good example for you. Um, But I think it's really easy as a woman to put your husband against your child and pick sides. And I think that's completely inappropriate and sets a really bad example for your child. And really, it can be detrimental to a marriage. I'm going to touch on something that I know some people disagree with, but I hear a lot of people say um, that your husband should come before your children. And hear a lot of people get mad about that. Like it's a child. Your children need you. Your husband doesn't need you, you know? And I would just like to throw my throw my thoughts into that. Um, I personally think that you shouldn't be serving your husband food before your two-year-old necessarily if your two-year-old's begging for food. That's not what I mean by putting your husband above your children. But I do think my husband and I chose each other and we chose to do the most unnatural thing ever, which is to be married. My son is the most natural product of intimacy ever. And I can't help but love him. And the majority of us, we can't help but love our children. So what I would say is I think having a spouse takes more effort than being a good parent. Um, You naturally want to be a good parent. You naturally want to love them well. Um, With a husband, sometimes we get in seasons where we're like, I don't like you or I don't want to like you. Or um, for me, if I can be quite honest, um, I've gone through seasons of having some sorts of resentment that I have to work through based on different things because I made choices with my husband to get married. And then choices have consequences. They have um, they cost something. Right. And so being married, I've really recognized the cost of that. And sometimes that really rubs me the wrong way and I have to work through it. Um, Having a child, though, like there's a cost there. And that's something you have to walk through as well. So I would say when I'm talking about my relationship with my husband and my relationship with my child and someday children, my husband's relationship with me is going to take a lot more effort, um, external effort, I would say. So things like date nights, we don't really do date nights right now. Um, I don't think it's important yet. We don't, we only have a baby and he sleeps so much and we still get to spend like nights together watching Netflix and things like that. Um, but I would say as, as our kids grow in number (laughs) and age, and it's a little more hectic in our household, um, we will start introducing weekly date nights. Yes, that might mean that you have to say no to helping your kid with a project. You have to say no to helping your kid make cookies. You have to say no to certain things with your children. But ultimately, my children are not going to be, gosh, there's no better investment for the sake of my children than my marriage. Um, I grew up with divorced parents, so I'm not saying that you can't have great kids and be divorced. That's, I mean, I'm amazing and my parents are divorced. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> but I am saying 
I know how good it's going to be for my son to be raised by me and raised by my husband full time. I don't want to take that away from any of my children. And so that requires me investing in my marriage. Um, And so those are the steps we'll take. It also means that when we disagree on something that involves our children or doesn't, we won't do it in front of them. Um, I want our kids to know when I, this might not be a popular opinion. I don't want my kids to think as adults that their parents never fought. Um, I think that would be a disservice to them because then when they get in a relationship and they fight all the time, they're like, my parents never did this. I want them to know, yeah, we do fight. Um, but I don't want them to ever see what that looks like necessarily. Um, cause it's just a lot of times adult fights are adult fights. They're not for children. Um, and when I say fighting, I mean, disagreement, argument, discussion, whatever. Um, and so maybe, and to me, and we'll see how this goes, that looks a little bit like, When I can tell my husband and I need to talk about something and our children are present, I would say, you know what? Mom and dad have to talk about this because we're not in agreement right now. Let us have a minute and we're going to leave and talk about it Um, because I want our kids to know we're not always on the same page. However, I never want to have our children put my husband and I against each other. And I think no one has that intention going into it, but I don't want to ever say to my children like, daddy thinks this, but he's wrong or um, or just undermine the decisions my husband's made in whatever scenario. So I think it's really important, um, to just make that conscious effort. So I guess that's kind of, I guess my goal right now in our marriage and how I'm going to, what's the word, value it? and make it a priority. That's what I'm going for. Uh, I would say, gosh, this has been all over the place with all my different feelings about motherhood and marriage and how they go hand in hand. And I hope it sparked some ideas in you, maybe um, challenged you in some things. I hope it was encouraging. Um, So going forward for the next few episodes, We're going to be talking to different moms about the same topic. I'm not promising that we're always going to do series or it's always going to be a million episodes about one topic, but I really thought it would be good to hear from different perspectives. I also selfishly wanted to learn more for myself in navigating marriage and motherhood, and so that's why I reached out to different moms and interviewed them. I hope you super enjoy everything that's coming, and I can't wait to talk to you again, mamas. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to check out all of the goodness from today's episode on the show notes and share with a friend if it impacted you in any way. You can also leave a review on iTunes so that other mamas can join the movement of loving the woman inside the mother. Join our online Mommy Space community every day by following us on Instagram at Mommy Space. So you can interact with me and other mamas, be encouraged, and give your valuable input on how to make this beautiful community even more safe and inspiring for mamas all over the world. All my love to you, mama. You are enough.